joined by the comments Rex Tillerson made in Africa before returning home to face firing. The United States may be suspicious of China's strong and growing presence on the continent. Is China ripping off Africa? According to a study by McKinsey, about 90% of Chinese firms working in Africa are privately owned. And also close to 90% of the employees in Chinese firms in Africa are African. The main anchor of U.S. trade and probably overall economic relations with Sub-Saharan Africa since the year 2000 has been the African Growth and Opportunity Act, or AGOA. The program offers preferential access to U.S. markets by eliminating import tariffs. Policymakers hoped that AGOA, as the primary U.S. trade policy for the region, will foster economic and political development in Africa. Unfortunately, U.S. trade with Argoa participants has dropped since its 2008 peak, almost to its pre-Argoa total, while African trade relations with China have expanded. In 2012, China had a trade value of about 200 billion U.S. dollars with Africa, compared to about 108 billion dollars of U.S. trade with the continent. The U.S. has a very shallow and narrow distribution of its trade with Africa. Indeed, about 90% of U.S. Africa trade today is crude petroleum exports. In contrast, Chinese firms in Africa spread across manufacturing, services, trade, construction, and real estate. Many constraining factors exist and undermine productivity in Africa making it less able to produce goods and services for advanced economies. African nations are still lacking in significant accumulation of capital, which can increase output and therefore economic growth and increase competitiveness. Unfortunately, and because of this serious deficit in capital accumulation and technological advancement, Africa continues to lag behind in global competitiveness. Africa needs to tap its huge diaspora population in America to gain technical know-how and even a good footing and traction for U.S. and other markets. To be sure, Africa has what it takes to be very useful to China and America. The coming consumers are in Africa. And if the continent gets its act together, the coming producers, leveraging its vast natural resources, are also in Africa. I'm Magnus Paco, and that's my view. Oh, <laughs>